Hello everyone and welcome back to the second episode of IGCSE Biology with Afrin. Today she'll be talking about the organization of, organi of the organisms. So let's get right into it. Um, okay everyone. Uh, so today we're looking at organization of organisms. Um, so that's the second chapter in IGCSE Biology. So we'll start with the first part that is the cell structure. Um, this is the syllabus. So we'll be looking at <clears throat> some parts of the cells and then different types of cells. And we'll be looking at some key definitions that you'll need to memorize for this chapter. So to get started, first we will look at the parts of cells. So now all living organisms are made of cells and these cells consist of smaller parts called cell organelles. Um, now for IGCC biology, we'll mainly focus on animal and plant cells. So we'll look at the plant uh, cell organelles that these two types of cells have in common and the exclusive cell organelles that each of these cells have. So um, animal cells actually have the following five cell organelles. That's the cell membrane, cytoplasm, nucleus, mitochondria, and ribosomes. Plant cells also have these. Additionally, they also have vacuoles, cell walls, and chloroplasts. Um, so you'll need to know the functions of each of these cell organelles. Cell membranes are essentially a window to the cell. So they control what substances enter and leave the cell. And then there's cytoplasm. They're this um, jelly-like sap sort of substance. And this is where all the chemical reactions in the cell take place. Um, and then there's the nucleus. The nucleus contains the DNA and it's, it controls the cell. So it's basically the control center of the cell. And then there's mitochondria. Mito it's the organelle where all cell reactions take place. The aerobic re respiration takes place. So you must have heard of the phrase, uh, mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. So yeah, that's a convenient phase phrase to remember because that's essentially what it is. Uh, and then there's ribosomes ribosomes make proteins and they can be found within the cytoplasm so you'll be looking at uh, protein synthesis or the making of proteins uh, more into detail in the last few chapters so these are all the cell organelles that animal cells have and plant cells also have um, additionally plant cells have vacuoles now the va function of vacuole is to store food and water and it also allows the cell to maintain its shape. Uh, and then there's cell walls. Cell walls provide additional support, external support, and um, it keeps the cell wall rigid. Um, Ethan? Oh, uh, yeah, sorry, I just disconnected for some reason. Okay. Uh, so yeah, the cell wall keeps the cell rigid and helps maintain its shape uh, uh, as well. And then there's chloroplast. Chloroplast contain this green pigment called chlorophyll um, which basically absorbs light energy to be used in photosynthesis. This light energy is converted to chemical energy um, and it is used in photosynthesis. You'll be looking at more into detail for about that process uh, in the next few chapters. So here's a diagram. Uh, these are the, the ones in blue are the common cell organelles. There are also ribosomes and mitochondria, which is not mentioned here. Um, but yes, there's ribosomes, mitochondria, cell membrane, cytoplasm, and nucleus in common. And plant cells exclusively have uh, chloroplast, vacuole, and cell wall. And you need to know the functions of each of those organelles. And then there's the bacterial cell. So you don't need to know much about this. Um, you'll be looking ab uh, about the plasmid DNA in the, in the biotechnology chapter. But for now, you, oops. for now, you need to know that they have cell membranes and a cell wall, and they do not have nucleus. This is something we mentioned in the first chapter as well. Um, so there's, uh, they have free floating DNA and rings called plasmid DNA, which is um, something we use in biotechnology. Uh, you will find out later. And then bacteria has a flagellum, which allows it, uh, in, which helps in movement. Not all bacteria have this though, but this is something you can take note of. And then we've got key definitions. So first of all, you need to be able to state that new cells are formed by cell division. And there are two cell division processes that you need to know about, meiosis and mitosis. Both of these processes we will look uh, for more detail, we will look into with more detail in another chapter. 
And then you've got some key definitions. So you need to know about cells, tissues, organs, and organ system. Um, when you read this, you'll uh, notice a pattern which makes it easy for you to memorize. So for starters, you've got to learn cells, which is the smallest functional unit in a living organism. Uh, you need to be able to state some examples. So there's muscle cell, there's nerve cells, um, red blood cells, and then um, there's so many examples. Uh, and there's tissues. Tissues are groups of similar cells working together to perform a same function. So for example, your muscles. And then organs are a group of tissues working together to perform a shared function. For example, your heart. So tissues and organs, you must have noticed the pattern by now. Uh, and organ system also follows the similar pattern. It, organ system is a group of organs with related functions working together to perform a body function. So it's a lot, but when you keep, notice the pattern, it becomes easy to learn. And this is something you have to memorize because they usually come for like one or two mark questions. Uh, and it's straightforward. You just have to, they'll just ask you to define and you have to define. Or they might give you fill in the blanks and you'll have to fill in the blanks. So these are not heavy uh, toll questions. So you can just memorize that. Yeah, and then you need to know the examples of each. So muscle cells, heart, um, blood cells, and then you need to know examples of organs like heart, brain, stomach, and then you need to know examples of organ systems like the circulatory and the digestive system. And that's about it. Um, now we'll look at specialized cells. So all organisms have some cells that make the functions easier for them. So we start with ciliated cells. This is the diagram here. Uh, they basically are found in the trachea and the bronchi and they trap mucus and prevent it, to, prevent it from flowing into our lungs and basically disrupting our functions. So yeah, that's what it's used for. And then the next ones, the root hair cells. They are used, uh, they basically increase the surface area of the roots in plants. Okay, the root hair cells are found in plants and they increase the surface area of the roots so that a uh, maximum amount of water is absorbed from the soil. And then the third one is the palisade mesophyll cells. They contain chloroplast. That's the green circle thingies on the corner, um, around the edges. And the chloroplast contain chlorophyll, like we've already discussed, which allows um, photosynthesis to occur in the cells. So palisade mesophyll uh, cells will have a high concentration of chloroplast uh, because that's where maximum photosynthesis occurs. And then this one, the next one is neuron or the nerve cell. And they basically conduct electrical impulses. So, uh, so this is when you talk you talk about involuntary or voluntary reactions. Basically, it has to do with your brain and your spinal cord. And you look more into the uh, adaptations and functions in the coordination and response chapter. And the next one is the red blood cells. So um, you notice its shape. It's, it's a biconcave shape. And it's a flat disk, sort of. And it has no nucleus so that uh, more oxygen can be accommodated. And the main function of red blood cells is to transport oxygen around the body. Um, and then there's sperm and egg cells, also known as gametes. And they're used in reproduction. You look at the, they have some adaptations like the flagellum and the jelly coating around the egg, the flagellum in the sperm. Um, you look more into the adaptations in chapter 16. That's the reproduction chapter. Okay, moving on. This is size of specimen. So over here, we'll talk about magnification and we'll learn a formula and we'll do some conversions. Okay, so this is the formula you need to know here. Um, so basically they might give you a drawing and then they'll ask you to draw a magnified version of the drawing. This, is, this usually comes, this almost always comes in the paper six. That's the alternative to practical. <clears throat> So um, the alternative practical, right? So they'll give you a drawing, uh, a picture, and they'll uh, ask you to draw a larger version of it. So when you're drawing that larger image, you make sure that you try to capture the major details. Don't try to go for the minor details, like the small circles or something like that. You avoid that because <clears throat> you lose marks that way, actually. And there are a few rules to drawing. You, you use sharp pencil, and you don't do shading. And you, when you erase something, make sure you erase it properly and don't leave any lines that might confuse an examiner. 
and that's about it. Uh, so right. basically, you have to make a freehand drawing. So if you're drawing a leaf, you make sure you don't use a ruler because it has to be freehand, it has to be smooth. And yeah, that's about it. And you make sure you use more than half the space provided. It, because when they say magnification, it has to be magnified. Right. So and basically, then, if you forget to bring like a pencil, you're screwed. Yeah. So okay, um, bring a pen. Invigilators, oh, you cannot use a pen. That, that's that's oh, okay. So you have to make sure you use a pencil, a sharp pencil. You can't oh. use a blunt one. And yeah, yeah, because if your lines are too thick, you could lose marks for that. That really depends right. on the examiner. Right. Well, remember to bring a pencil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or if you forget one, ask your invigilator before the exam. Yeah. Uh, okay, so on to the formula. The next question is usually going to be, um, okay, so the original image was, say, 5 millimeters, 50 millimeters, and measure the size of your drawing and then calculate the magnification. So th those kind of questions might come. Or sometimes they'll give you the both the lengths and you just have to find the magnification by using the formula. It really depends on the paper. Um, so the formula itself is the size of the drawing divided by the size of the specimen. Mm -hmm. So that is, you can use a formula triangle. That is the image cubs at the top and then the magnification at the actual size. So the way I remember memorized this was I am. You know, so does that make sense? Like I mm. and then A M. So that's like I am. That doesn't really complete any sentence, but help me memorize. Right. And then onto the conversion part of it. Uh, yeah. So as you know, meter is the SI unit of length. So yeah. you need to be able to convert meters to millimeters and meters to micrometers. So in bio, IGCC biology, they don't really ask this, but um, I would still suggest this is something you have a brief idea of because it really helps you. Um, so basically one millimeter is 10 times, uh, 10 to the power of minus three meters. That is 0 0.001 meters. And then mm. one micrometer is 10 to the power of minus six meters. I'm not gonna say the full thing because that's just gonna be really confusing. But uh, when you try to convert micrometer to millimeter or millimeter to micrometer, you have to think in terms of thousands. So it's the easiest to remember one millimeter equals to 1000 micrometers. Okay, so this is something you need to memorize because there are conversion questions. The conversion questions can come in paper two, the MCQ, or in paper six, alternative practical. And um, that's about it for this chapter. So let's look at some wow. questions. Uh, okay, so this is a major in 2020, paper two. Okay, so this is a liver cell. Oh, this is a magnification question. Okay, so if you remember the formula, that is image size equals to actual image size multiplied by magnification. So if you put that in the calculator, the, the information they've given you here is the image size and they have given you the magnification. So you need to find the actual length. So over here, um, if you look back to the formula, you need to find the actual image, right? So that would be image size divided by magnification. And image size is six millimeters. So we'll do six divided by 2000. And that is three times 10 to the power of minus three. So that is three micrometers. And the answer is B. So when you, when you get, because you've uh, entered in the calculator in millimeters, you'll get the answer in millimeters. So that was three times 10 to the power of minus three. But over here, <clears throat> all of, almost all of these answers are in micrometers except for answer D. And it's very unlikely to be option D because it's a cell and it cannot be 12,000 millimeters. So you look at the other options. Yeah. And then basically when you get three times to the power of minus three, you have to think that it is, okay, 0 0.003 micrometers. What would that be in, sorry, 0 0.003 millimeters. What would that be in micrometers? And when you multiply it by thousand, it's three micrometers. Yeah. Okay, so the next question. Uh, why do some root hair cells, so how about why do some root cells have root hairs? 
uh, if you remember the adaptations of the uh, specialized cells and the reason for the adaptation, you'll remember that the rooters, roots, plant roots have root hair cells to increase the surface area of the cells. Yeah. So for maximum absor absorption of water, and that is option B. Okay, May, June, 2017, paper two. Uh, a plant leaf has white areas and green areas. Mm -hmm. Okay, which cell structures are not present in the white areas? So if you remember, the green color comes from a pigment called chlorophyll, which are found in the cell organelles chloroplast. So for it to be green, it, the plant part has to have chloroplast. And if it's white, it evidently doesn't have chloroplast. So the option is C. It does not, that white part does not have chloroplast. Okay, October, November, 2021, the diagram shows some cells. Where are these cells found? So these are ciliated cells. And if you remember, they, the main function has something to do with mucus, move, uh, preventing mucus to move into the lungs and removal of it by uh, movement of the cilia. Yeah. Uh, so these are, should be found, they can't be in the elementary, elementary canal because the cilia is too sensitive for the food uh, particles mm -hmm. and they might get broken down by it. And it's not found in the blood because they could, mm -hmm. um, provide resistance to blood flow. Mm -hmm. And then they're not in the plant roots because plant roots have root hair cells. So the ev evident answer is bronchus. If you just remember, it has something to do with lungs and mucus. So you remember trachea and bronchi, bronchus. Sure. And um, yeah, that's about it. That's chapter two. Oh, wow. That was a uh, yeah, nice that and is, short it chapter. Is uh, that is pretty good because it is um, very informative and like condensed, which is nice. All right. Well, um, thank you for um, explaining chapter two. Um, so for next episode, what do you want to talk about? Um, we'll be looking at movement into and out of cells. So if you remember okay. the cell membrane, so we'll look at some processes like diffusion and osmosis. Right. All right. That sounds interesting and well hopefully we'll see you next week then. Yeah. Bye. Bye.